Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. Let's get started in prayer. Once again, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you, Father God, Mother God, source of our being. We are returned, joining together. We celebrate in this love that together we are where we are supposed to be, where there has been an unreal world. We now give birth to a world atoned that it may perfectly reflect what you have completed in us because we are made even in this moment in your image. Our love is without ceasing forever and ever. And we thank you in Jesus' name, in Buddha's name, Allah's name, our name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Cover all the bases. <laughs> we truly are the world religion. We truly are. Once people come to accept that, they won't fight. Mm -hmm. They really won't. It'll be a different world. All right. Lesson six, the lessons of love. One of my favorite topics. Mm -hmm. In this, we're kind of going to talk more about the thoughts before we get into the real aspect of the love portion of it. So question number one, <clears throat> what can be expected from the insane premises except an insane conclusion. Pastor, I don't know. <laughs> don't know what to expect. <laughs> well, the way to undo an insane conclusion is to consider the sanity of the premises on which it rests. That's how it's undone. Another way to undo it, <clears throat> be, do, have. Do y'all remember when we taught that? <clears throat> when you do be, do, have, it actually reverses the action, meaning the thought. Instead of, if you think about it, if you go, I'm going to be that, and then do that, and then have that, what would the mindset be? totally different, totally, totally, totally different because most people don't want to start at the end of the process. You start at the beginning of the process. How does that even make sense? Well, when you're working in faith, it's not designed to make sense. When you're working in unconditional love, it's not designed to make sense. It's designed to increase more. So the way you undo it is go back to the premises of, of where it began. Yes, Lily. Yeah, so right now, the, the, I think the only way I would do, I will walk backwards. So I will have the image first. What is the image you want out of all this, you know, even though it's chaotic or it's hard, but mm -hmm. what's your end image? And yeah. then you backward. That's right. That's a no, that is perfect analogy because now when people hear this recording, that will make more sense to them. Because mm -hmm. now you gave them a, a process, I gave them a definition. You gave them, hey, project it. Yes, Sudi. But, but, uh, what, what you just mentioned actually already happened in the, in the design world. You see, for example, if you want to build a house, Mm -hmm. You don't tell the, the, the architect that, you know, you start from the foundation and then you do the building this way, you do the roof this way. No, you stay away, tell the architect, I want the house to be like five bedrooms, you know, four baths and, and it has to be blue in color and all those things. And then the architect will have to start from the foundation all the way up to there. So, yep. so in real life, there are some tricks that are already doing it that way. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Watch this. <clears throat> Your blueprint mm. of what you're describing is your end result. Mm. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think about it. <clears throat> You've already put it on paper. You be. Now the do. Now I have it. Mm -hmm. Now it's an organization of I want a five bedroom, three bath two car garage, swimming pool, da, 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 da. And as you said, the architect goes and gets the paper mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and draws it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's already done because now you can look at the image on the paper mm -hmm. and get a visualization of what the house is going to be. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Thank mm -hmm. you. Sir. That's perfect. Ooh, I love when y'all dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, little sister. You could have came in the room. Hello. Hello. You could have came in. I didn't mind. It was <laughs> locked. No, you got to on the hard. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Well, no, I'm good. I can see you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just downstairs. I've been seeing you all day. I see you. <laughs> she came in yesterday and surprised our, our, her daughter, my niece. For her seventh birthday. <laughs> Yay. All right, question number two. Miracles are blank. Miracles are blank. Miracles? Good shot. Good shot. Good shot. Miracles are miraculous. Ooh, even better. I might even take that one. <laughs> Okay, I, ooh, ooh, Anson, you're on the right track. Let me help you out. Where does miracle start from? Mine. Mine. Yes. Thought. Yes. Mine, your thought. Miracles are what? Thought. Oh. I want a five bedroom house. Thought. Hmm. All of a sudden, it projected in the image on a paper, and then all the little workers go grab all the materials and foundation house five bedroom and we go ooh ah ah now let's paint let's put pictures let's put furniture gotta have a gaming den there yeah let's have a <laughs> <laughs> with a covered patio <laughs> mm -hmm. indeed miracles are thoughts absolutely what is a new sponsoring thought ooh what is a new sponsoring thought? The easiest way to help you understand a new sponsoring thought is how do you get rid of a negative thought? Is the best way. Yeah. Get rid of the negative thought by creating a new sponsoring thought. Mm -hmm. I guess it's by asking, is this a satisfying thought, right? Yes, absolutely. Ooh, great, great, great. I love you. Good evening, Melissa. Hello. I'm working on my Chinese. Ni hao ma. One love. I, I'm going to have more words next week. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect answer. Is this a satisfying thought? And when we're teaching people that are before you all in your workplaces and as you go out through your days and through your schools and as you sell houses and raise little nieces and things like that. Is this a satisfying thought? And if it's not, how do I change it to a new sponsoring thought? Because sometimes if you let the thought get away, it's hard to reverse that thought. It's hard to reel it back in, especially if it's something that might be considered traumatic or chaotic or detrimental. Hard to reel that in. So. One of the, yes, Lily. <clears throat> I, my way to change the thought <laughs> is, I think Melissa, I will go to sleep. I'll take a quick nap. Stop thinking. <laughs> yes. That's a great, yes. It's a training timeout. <laughs> yes. Timeout. <laughs> it's, it's a timeout. I used to do that until I would learn to meditate to take that. Mm. real deep and then really go i created this i own this oh hard part <laughs> yes lily but but there's something that i i don't tell other people is that before i actually you know fall asleep i would say okay i know that i have this problem it's coming up 
you go and take care of it. I'm just gonna yeah. take my nap and then when I wake up, it's, it's gonna be done. it's all done. Somebody's gonna take care of it. And oh yes, I love you for that. Like that. It's always like that. And yep. then Melissa will go like, <clears throat> how can you sleep? Yep. I but think that's my only solution. <laughs> no, and no, and that's a great solution because in essence of what you're doing and creating a new sponsoring thought, you're praying, you're affirming. It's an affirmation, it's a prayer, it's a decree. You're asking everybody in the universe on the other side of the veil, God, Holy Spirit, Buddha, everyone, mm -hmm. I need help with this. Go take a nap, Lily. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. When you wake up, we'll have it all figured out. Why? <clears throat> it's the when you're in that resting state and you truly rest, it's hard to pick up that negative stuff and bring it with you. When you truly go take a nap and you wake up, there's no resistance. There's nothing that's preventing you to go, <clears throat> okay, now I'm rested. I can now look at this from a new thought, a new perspective. I can look at it from a place of love. I can look at it from a place of neutrality. <clears throat> All of those things that are in the positive. And then watch this. Choose a new perspective. In other words, create a different experience. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Mm. All right. And we'll, we're going to talk more about the sponsoring thought. And you already answered question four, so we'll just jump to the affirmation. Yay, Pastor, we love you. <laughs> well, what page is it? 262. 262. It'll be lesson six, and the title will be The Lessons of Love. Okay. Get it? All right. After Affirmation is, I am responsible for my thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you don't own it, then we begin to project it on the other people, and then it becomes the blame game. Then everything that happens chaotic rocks our world. Now we can't go to sleep like Lily does because we're too busy tossing and turning. Is this going to get approved? Is this going to get... Is this going to go through? <clears throat> Are they going to say okay? That's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is while the one is at peace, trying yeah. to, the one over here is restless, and <laughs> she kind of goes, "Can you be at peace? Cause you messing up my peace." <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but then watch this too. You are restless and to the point where you cannot be no more restless and you fall asleep. Yes. Ooh, everybody catch that? Yeah. <laughs> and not only does he fall asleep, he has a good night's sleep. But now what he does is when he wakes up, he picks it back up again. True. <laughs> <laughs> but watch this. When he picks it up again, it's from a new sponsoring thought because in his sleep state, he's already did the logical thing. And now when he comes up, he's going to use the right mind. And now the solution is there. Mm -hmm. The answer is there. Mm -hmm. How do I help this student get through? And I love that example that you gave of that student. You really gave that time to, and they got it and they excel and they passed. Mm -hmm. And this is why you reap the rewards every year of being the top school in Canada. Yay, that's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody read the first one? The relationship of anger to attack is obvious, but the relationship of anger to fear is not always apparent. Anger always involves projection of separation, which must ultimately be accepted as one's own responsibility rather than being blamed on others. Anger cannot occur unless you believe that you have been attacked and your attack is justified in return and that you are in no way responsible for it. Given these three wholly irrational premises, 
uh, premises, the equally irrational conclusion that a brother or sister is worthy of attack rather than of love must follow. What can be expected from insane premises except an insane conclusion? Mm -hmm. The way to undo an insane <clears throat> conclusion is to consider the sanity of the premises on which it rests. Mm -hmm. You cannot be attacked. Attack has no justification and you are responsible for what you believe. Thank you, Brother Sudi. Did everyone understand that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be attacked. Mm -hmm. That's an illusion. I don't care what you see on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, social media, CNN, Fox, whatever your news media. Go ahead, Lily. Yeah, but it, 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 in, the, in the past, I, I, would, I would find people to attack. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> And well, <laughs> I, 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 he, that's why he needs to solve the problem really quick before I <laughs> have any explosion and then you go do it. <laughs> this is why he learned to find the solution very quickly. He did, he did not want Warrior Lily to unleash <laughs> and go to battle. <laughs> he wanted peaceful Lily, the healing Lily, the loving Lily. That's what he wanted. But y'all work together as a team to work that yin and yang. And now you have the perfect balance where now you don't want to go to war like that anymore. When I was really in religion, I really would attack other people's religion if you weren't part of this doctrine or theology or church. Only because this was taught to us and inbred in us and that's what we thought even though in my spirit it didn't feel right mm -hmm. i thought oh this is what we're supposed to do because the premises was if everybody's doing it and everybody's saying amen it must be right because it's in the book yeah. even though it didn't feel right mm -hmm. so now i would go out and attack and then had no defense on what I was trying to justify. Does that make sense? Yes. And what I would, what it did was instead of draw them in, it pushed them further away. Yes. To the point where we couldn't have a relationship, to the point where <clears throat> I don't like you, you don't like me, we can't talk religion. So every time we come around, we can't talk religion, we can't talk politics. So now that means we can't talk about nothing. Uh -huh. everything else other than those two topics and it should never ever 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 be that way mm -hmm. let me side note your governments on this planet is supposed to look like the government of God mm -hmm. supposed it's mm -hmm. not happening does not, but no. that's the way it's supposed to look. Our job <clears throat> is to help it look like the government of God. Return it back to the oneness, back to the trueness. We can do it through the prayer. We can do it through the affirmation. This is why when you're praying in your general prayers or your specific prayers, you should always pray for your governments high and low, always. If we don't pray for them, who will? Look at how much division is caused right here in the United States between our governments, between the Democrats and the Republican party. So much division and everybody's trying to hold on to their seats, hold on to their power, hold on to the money and has nothing to do with the constituents in which they're supposed to serve. <clears throat> End of side note. <laughs> you have been asked to take me as your model for learning. Since an extreme example is a particularly helpful learning device, everyone teaches and teaches all the time. This is a responsibility you inevitably assume the moment you accept any premise at all, and no one can organize his life without some thought system. Everyone has a thought system. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to brush my teeth, wash my face, take a shower, 
get dressed, eat breakfast, not eat breakfast. Got to have coffee before I talk to anyone. <laughs> Type. <Yeah. laughs> we know people like that, don't we? Got to have that Starbucks, got to have that coffee, because if they don't, you cannot have a conversation with them. And they go, really? Wow. So the coffee is the thought system that rules the day. So now once the cup of joe is in the body and the caffeine's flowing, now I can talk to Melissa and love all of Melissa, but then when it crashes, oh, I need another cup of joe. <laughs> okay. Once you have developed a thought system of any kind, you live by it and teach it. And this is what I was doing when I was in religion or so, and again, it was nothing more than divisive. It's separated, mm -hmm. not bring anything together. There was no love in it <clears throat> and it actually confused people. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> the people that I brought in it, I couldn't retain them because there was no power or truth in it because they begin to question how are you gonna say you're this, but you act opposite of what you're saying. Yes. So now we look like hypocrites and then when questioned, don't have a definitive answer to back it up. And then wonder why they left and went elsewhere. And then I would, oh, well, they didn't want the truth. That would be my cop out to justify them leaving instead of my fault. My fault. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes. Your capacity for allegiance to a thought system may be misplaced but it is still a form of faith and can be redirected. Mm -hmm. Miracles are thoughts. Thoughts can represent the lower or bodily level of experience or the higher or spiritual level of experience. One makes the physical and the other creates the spiritual. Side note, the spirit world is more real than the physical world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> When you want to change a root thought, act in accordance with the new idea you have. Everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. I really highlighted that because anytime you are stuck in a negative thought and you want to change that root thought, remember everything has a root. You go speak to the root of it. Most people don't want to go to the root of it because it's scary to them. It's fearful. but you must act quickly or your mind will kill the idea before you know it. In other words, y'all remember when I gave the example of the homeless person who was standing on the corner and I had the $20 and had to pay my bill yeah. and he got nothing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I mean that literally, he got nothing. The idea, the new truth will be dead in, in you before you've had a chance to know it. Pump, pump, hurry up. Get up, drive here, boop, boop, I'm late. He gets nothing. <laughs> yeah. Try to come around, he's not there. Mm -hmm. So act quickly when the opportunity arises. And if you do this often enough, your mind will soon get the idea. In other words, you always hear us talk about the revelation. Anson had it perfect when he, he gave his praise report or his, his testimony. It was that thought that came in. Yes, Lily. I always think that uh, this is called, to me, it's called a spontaneous act. Ooh, I like that. You don't think about it. You just see what is needed. You get it done. Don't think too much. You let your mind think. There it goes. You, yes. The opportunity is gone. Yes. And what you're doing is you're going on feeling. Hmm. That feeling is what we described earlier or often is the knowing it's above your faith you just know and you act on that knowing watch this when people ask you how you know you can't give them an answer <laughs> you just know and you sound crazy we all sound crazy trying to explain i just know i just had a feeling i went on the feeling yes yes i just I just now we went to the supermarket and that was a uh, we were pushing back I, I was the one who put back the trolley, uh -huh. and the shopping cart. And then there was a woman standing uh, at the side. So when I was done, I looked at her. We were all wearing masks. So I couldn't tell what, what she wants. But I asked her, do you need a coin? 
And she said, yes, yes, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of exchange because uh -huh. over here, the dollar and she gave me four quarters. Yes. So it was kind of like a sense. So right now, the, the, this sense is, uh, I would say, very sharp now. So yep. it's good. And the more you practice it and the more you feel it, the more it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. Instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Oh, so I quickly, when the opportunity arises, if you do this often enough, your mind will soon get the idea. It will be your new thought. New sponsoring thoughts is your only chance. It's your only real opportunity to evolve, to grow, to truly become who you really are. The most valuable skill or talent that you could ever develop is that of directing your sponsoring thoughts. That's what Lily was talking about earlier. She intuitively could tell what the woman wanted. Here's why. She didn't ask a whole bunch of questions. She asked one question, didn't she? Think about that. She could have been like, oh, do you need the car? No, I don't need the car. Do you need some money? She, do you need some help? You get what I'm saying? It could have been any of those things, but she went exactly to the source of what that person needed. Mm -hmm. Do you need a coin? Yeah. Welcome, God Williams. Hey, Dr. Meekins, how are you? We're blessed. We're on page 264. 264, and we're in lesson six. The lessons of love. Woohoo! Any praise report testimonies, real quick? Had a great time in Hawaii. Yes, she did. <laughs> Welcome back to the States. Aloha. Man. <laughs> Which is better, here or Hawaii? Hawaii. <laughs> I can answer that. I've been there several times. <laughs> That's my home away from home. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to go, go. You will not be let down, I promise you. It is everything and then some. Am I right, Sister Williams? It is. It was more than what I expected. It was beyond what I expected. Was that your first time going or you've been there before? No, that was my first time. Oh man, what did you go to the Big Island? Uh, Honolulu. Honolulu, yeah, Big Island. Yep. Big Island, okay. I hit every island, including some unknown islands, in Hawaii. Oh, great time! All right, back to the lesson. <laughs> I almost went on vacation on you. <laughs> okay, direct your sponsor and thoughts toward what you want. Want to be adapted quickly, evaluating all situations, and then quickly coming to the conclusion of what you most want, and then giving your undivided attention to that. Did everybody get that? Yes. Yeah. Right. That is important. This right here, if I don't teach you anything else, this right here, remember this, because this helps you with deliberately creating what you're trying to manifest. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So once you learn how to direct your sponsoring thoughts to what you want, then it'll quickly just become second nature, intuitive. Mm -hmm. There is tremendous skills in deliberately directing your sponsoring thoughts that you will yield results that cannot be compared with results that mere action can provide. Mm -hmm. You have control over the sponsoring thoughts you think. Since you have control over what sponsoring thoughts you offer, what could be more just than, a, than the powerful law of attraction responding equally to everyone who offers a vibration? Sister Williams, you don't have to tell the whole thing, but can you kind of give them a, a, the praise report that you share with me? Because this right here is exactly what you experienced. If you oh, want. okay. Um, before I, I um, went on vacation, I specifically asked something and I didn't tell anybody what I asked because I was you know practicing mm -hmm. and got everything that I asked for and then some it's kind of like the Ephesians 119 exceedingly abundantly above yes. and it was 
amazing because you can't even make it up. But I asked for something specific on the trip trip to happen, and it happened exactly the way I asked for it. But then it, even at a greater standpoint. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. She got into that who was offered a vibration. She got into the vibration, tapped in, tuned in, turned on in the alignment of that thought. She, in other words, she followed the trail. Followed the trail. Once you gain control over the sponsoring thoughts you think, your sense of injustice will subside and will be replaced with the exuberance for life and the zest to create that you birth, were you birth, or were born with. Let everything in the universe be an example to you of the way the laws of the universe work. You can follow the trails of good feeling thoughts or the new sponsoring thought. Most people have most people have put anything that earns money in the category of things that I have to do. And that is why mo the money often comes so hard. This is why the 11.5 haven't come for a lot of people that I've told this to. Because it's too big. They can't handle the small things that are given to them. How in the world can they handle the big things? Make sense? If you're wise enough to follow the trail of good feeling thoughts by deliberately looking for positive aspects along your way, you will come into vibrational alignment <clears throat> with who you really are and with the things you really want. And once you do that, the universe must deliver to you a viable means to achieve your desires. In other words, the universe will move heaven and earth to get you what you want. Sure. For all the promise in him is Yes, in him, amen. God never tells you no. He's not a no God. It might not be the best for you, but you're going to get it. Yes. <laughs> Y'all remember my example, right? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Don't pray for five of them. <laughs> Just pray for one and be happy with the one. <laughs> You are all each responsible for the sponsoring thoughts you think. When you are in alignment with who you really are, you cannot help but uplift those with whom you come in contact with. <clears throat> when Anson met the racist man, he uplifted that man. Do you understand that? Yes. Nobody else uplifted that man. Everybody else ran from that racist man. <laughs> except for the one who was bold as a lion to win into the lion's den to ask the racist man what's the problem and then discovered what the problem was and gave him a solution and got a racist remark and still loved on that man glory to god mm -hmm. that's important get that great job anson and i i keep using that because We've all experienced that in one point of our life, <laughs> saying something racist or judgmental toward us. It doesn't have to be racist. It could be something judgmental. I used to have a complex about my height. Everybody who was talking to me, boy, I wanted to fight them. <laughs> Napoleon <laughs> syndrome is what they call it. <laughs> Little person syndrome. <laughs> Thought I had to prove something. <laughs> now, being short is a good thing. Yeah, you're gonna be, you, yeah, you're as cool as a hobbit, so you're, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Your value to those around you hinges upon only one thing. One thing. Your personal alignment with source creator. Your alignment with God. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Get aligned with the God in you, source creator. And the only thing that you have to give to another is an example of that alignment which others may observe, then desire, and then work to achieve, but you cannot give it to them. Everyone is responsible for sponsoring, for the sponsoring thoughts they think and the things they choose as their objects of attention. So if that person wants to sit there and watch news all day long, you bless them. If they wanna sit there and have negative thoughts, after you've tried to convince them to change their thoughts, let them. How does this affect you at the end of the day? It doesn't. 
Your mind is right now filled with old thoughts, not you all. Not only old thoughts, but mostly someone else's old thoughts. It's important now, it's time now to change your mind about some things. This is what evolution is all about. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes, Libby. I uh, recently in uh, in our group chat with Melissa uh, and her kids and my kids, our kids. Uh -huh. So I said, we must always focus on creating the mm -hmm. good, the holy, and the beautiful. Yes. Even wait, wait, wait. Even when when SHIT happens, <laughs> it's still going to be good, holy, oh, yeah. and beautiful. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you blessed that four little one. <laughs> indeed, with love. Absolutely. And what would you get? Love in return. Because Holy Spirit will take that and correct that called the atonement. This is what Jesus came for. That's the blessing. And then what happens is you, no one talked bad about it. You didn't tell the sad story or the negative aspects of the story. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you treated it with love because it was the good, the holy, and the, the beautiful. Because it is the essence of your being of how you were created and why you were created, who you really are. Yes. But the funny, the funny thing was, I felt that it wasn't me who would <laughs> say such a thing. But after I said it, I was like, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> right. Well, think about where did, where did the thought come from? Revelation. Revelation knowledge is the miracle. We should be in awe of that revelation because that is from God. That is from the Holy Spirit. We're asking where that thought come from because Pastor Meekins ain't that smart to think of that. <laughs> With all the degrees, cannot think like that. But but I was thinking, right? How can uh, Holy Spirit tell me about SHIT? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, because can you offend the Holy Spirit? No. Ooh. Can you offend God? No. Offense, offense would mean judgment. Yes. Holy Spirit is to recompense, comfort, and teach. There is no vengeance there. Wow. This is why Jesus came, because of the atonement to correct the errors. This is why the message of the crucifixion is so important, because of the atonement. That way, when you have that, those words, it's not shunned upon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody cringes that they wear it. And I go, well, as soon as the cameras come off and you close the doors, y'all all say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pastor, you come? <cut>? Yep. <laughs> We're human. Is it is it intentional? No. Is it correctable? Yes. When we stop playing these games, then we'll truly understand who God is. Unconditional love. He meets us right where we're at. Right when I was messed up and was fighting everybody, when I was in religion, he still loved me. Even when I was running them away from him, he said, that's okay. I'll just send them to somebody else. They'll get to me. I don't need you right now. I need you for a different purpose. And then he woke me up. I had to get a new sponsoring thought. Things begin to happen within the church. Personal relationship between me and the person begin to change dramatically to the point where I was like, okay, it's time to go. And I was grudgingly leaving because I was comfortable. So I had to get out of my comfort zone by creating a new sponsor and thought. And then because we're creatures of habit, I thought, well, because I left, I need to go follow the traditions of the churches and try to do the religious things. So I went from church to church to church to church to church to one to see if I fit in or to get an idea. And the Holy Spirit says, start your own church. But don't make it look like nothing that you've been in and teach everything. Everything we tell you, you teach it. 
Because at the end of the day, does it resonate in your spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only does it resonate in your spirit, you can go out and see the power in it and the proof in it. As they said, true, yeah. Woo. Everyone say amen. <laughs> Absolutely. I was, we're going to close in a moment, but here's a praise report. The weather out here was supposed to be sunny. This was yesterday. I told my son, I'm going to bring some clouds in. I, I pulled a lily, everybody, because she likes playing with clouds. So I did a lily and I pulled some clouds in. And in this area, it was cloudy. And my son looked through the, the, the weather report all day and was like, wow. And I said, remember what the book says. Let them have dominion over what? All of the earth. So we are to teach others what we are capable of. In other words, when the master was on the earth, Jesus, he says, the works that I do, you too shall do and greater works. Mm -hmm. So now we have to do the what? Greater works. How do we do it? By showing them the proof. The proof is in the love. They can disagree with me. I don't mind. I'm not offended. Zero. How does it affect me? None. I'm unoffendable. Do I have to still work on that? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Do I still got all those buttons that people used to push locked up, secure? Yeah. Do some of them get loose? Absolutely. <laughs> some of them get loose and I have to laugh. Hey, get back here. <laughs> Lasso them up and put them back in the range. <laughs> You know, but we're still human. But the thing is, as long as we're trying to the best of our ability and enjoying the process lovingly and loving ourselves and loving our brothers and sisters, we can't fail. We can't fail. All right. Questions, comments, concerns? All right. Group prayer tonight. Oh, yes. Yeah. Group prayer. We <laughs> On the count of three. One, two. Three, thank you again, Father, for this blessed day. We thank you for watching over us and protecting us. We thank you for opening up our heart and mind to receive this word by love and by faith. We pray as we lay down this evening, we can share with others that they can receive the life and have an intimate relationship with you. Bless over our neighbors, our neighborhood, those less short than ourselves. We pray your head protection around us. We thank you for the food that we have. We thank you for using us for signs, one of the miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you, Father, Mother, God, for the source of our being. We are returned, joining together. We celebrate the love that together we are. Where there has been an unreal world, there has been compassion, forgiveness, peace, understanding. We thank you for all these things that you have blessed upon us. In our name, we say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you all. We love you all. We bless you all. Until next week, we're going to play. Hey, meet me in the spirit. Yes. We're going to play in the spirit. <laughs> Sister William is really good at it. Melissa's really, really good at it. Lily's good at it. <laughs> all right. So let's have some fun. Love you all. Be blessed. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.